So today is chapter 10, and we'll be discussing um, how to create a dynamic uh, user interface. So the learning objectives include, we we'll learn how to add dynam dynamics to a shiny app, to be able to see interactive changes to potential automates, automated command functions for more complex visualizations. And come the end of the topic, we'll be able to understand what is a dynamic a user interface, what are the functions to update, hide or make visible, and also render the changes uh, made interactively from the UI to the server outputs. So these are the topics that we'll discuss. We'll start by introducing, um, and then we look at how we can update uh, inputs using the update functions, then creating a dynamic visibility. And lastly, we'll discuss how to create a UI uh, with a code. And the very last is the conclusions. Okay. So this chapter is based on the dynamic uh, user interface which is made by addressing the user interface by updating the server outcome. So here we'll look at three sections and all of them will relate to automated functions and being able to dynamically sorry, change the outputs passing through the parallel commands between the UI and the server. So through we'll see, uh, we'll answer the question, what is a dynamic user interface and how can we create a dynamic user interface interfaces? So one way to do this is changing the UI uh, using the code run in the server function and modifying inputs and outputs to see dynamic changes in the app. So that's just the introduction. So let's get to business. So how do we inter update interputs? Sorry, <laughs> inputs. There are three techniques uh, for creating a dynamic user interface. So we can use update uh, functions by updating the UI. Uh, we can also use the tab set panel where we hide and show um, different parts of the UI, which is reflected in the server. And lastly, we look at how to actually do it using the UI outputs and the render UI. So this UI output is in the UI, parts and the render UI, it's in the server parts. In the first part of, the, of this chapter, we'll see how to pass from a basic structure to a more complicated one by adding dynamics to the output of the app. And these are called updating functions. So we all know from the couple of chapters that you have learned that a sharp, shiny app is made up of two parts. So you have the UI, which is the user server, sorry, <laughs> user interface, or oh my, and a server. So we, and basically, I'm, I'm pretty sure we have seen this uh, through the discussions. So as a first example, where we have, um, so this is just a simple example where it's, up, we are updating it, showing the action button. So we are combining the action button, we combine with observe events, and update ID inputs. So once we combine all this, so this is the simplest way of updating, sorry, dynamically uh, creating a UI. So about the update functions, so we have an ID input, and then we have, so this is the UI, and then in the server we have update ID inputs. So these update functions do allow us to modify the control after it has been created with a series of the ID inputs and the update ID inputs, as we see below here. So we have an ID input, and then um, we make some text. So a text input to, we are looking, we, we want to um, show some text. Uh, and then we do some updates. And last, we see that now we are combining the text inputs and with the update text input, now this is in the server. And also the same can be done for numeric inputs. We do the same where we have a numeric input and then we have an update numeric input and so on. We can have even select inputs and then we have, it's updating the inputs. Now we have the update select inputs in the server function. Um, so I can show an example. 
Okay, so this is for the action. The so let me just show the code. So here where we are combining the action button, the observe events, and update slide the inputs. So we see here we have got the fluid, fluid page as we learned that it gives out the layout of uh, our app, and then we want to slide the inputs, the sliding thing, and uh, so we want the action button to be reset after if you, if you choose either of these slider inputs. And you see we are combining um, the action button and the observe events and also the update slider inputs. So if we look at that particular app, yeah. So if we slide, so we have slide this from the the value that was set, which was zero. So let's we put it at three, and then if I, if we click reset, it goes back into the value that was selected. Yeah. Um, the next part is now looking at, suppose that we have a data that is naturally hierarchical. So meaning that we have values within values, there's a like hierarchy in that. So we can use uh, this hierarchical um, option that has been, we're we are, we are learning here. So other considerations need to be done when we're requesting the app to update the following, the following an interactive input request made by the user. So here we learn about um, the update functions to allow interactive drills to drills down across multiple categories. And an example is like I've said, we have the selection of a natural hierarchy in the data. And it is important to create a user interface that will allow updating the inputs while maintaining stability and also I dynamically generating changes across multiple categories. So there was a very good example. I have it here. I, um, yeah. So let me explain. So this is a data that was gener that was obtained from Kaggle. Yeah. And it shows the samples, the sample, sample cells data. And within this data, we have three hierarchies. So we have each territory contains customers, and we have each customer has multiple orders, and each order contains rows. So here the author um, wants to create, uh, showed us how to create a user interface where we can select a territory if we want to see all the customers and then we select a customer to see all the orders they've made. And then we can see, we can select an order to see the underlying rows. So if we look at that, uh, yes. So here we have said we can look at, let's say the EMA we see that the customer, sorry, yeah. So we see that if we click the territory, we'll see the, the customer uh, button will change and also the order number will also change. But however, we can also make some changes to see that you see the, uh, the above remain as they are, but if we click um, the order number, so the order number changes, what I did not understand is why is it that if I click this, the order number changes? Is it okay? I understand it's because of the hierarchy, the hierarchy within the data. So that could be explaining why here only the order number, if we change it, that is what is changing because this is just the rows within. But if you look at, let's say, the Japan territory, and then we see the customer does change and the order number also does change because of the hierarchy hierarchy within the data. Sorry, I'm having a challenge pronouncing that name. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the code is as follows. So the select inputs we have, this is the, the placeholder ID and so on. And we want whatever that is being out, out, the output, it's be a table output data. So if you look at this function the, this in the server part, so we have different functions have been created based on the ID. 
um, the user ID that we did input in the user interface. So we have the territory. We want to filter the number of cells based on the territory that a user will pick. And then we also combine with observe events. And um, so with this, we also combine with update select input. So whenever you make an update, it, it is also reflected for the territory. And the same is done for customer ID. And then now our whatever that you want to see is output uh, data, output dollar sign data, which was given. So this was the placeholder given in the UI. And um, we see that we can also filter the we filter the number of orders based on the number of order number based on what a user will input. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Please shoot, but please do know <laughs> it was a challenging topic for me. So I am also learning with you as well. Okay. Uh, so we have seen that we've seen the app. So further considerations involve establishing priorities with the application of key features such as freezing reactive inputs. So this is a feature to freeze part of the inputs when expected series of changes. And so for establishing priorities and visualizing summarize data correctly. So there's an example of the live app that was shown. So here we have, um, yeah, the slides do not contain. Yeah, so if you look at this particular, so this is just a simple example where we, we choose a particular data set and a column, and then it shows us a summary. And if we look at the server function, we have, um, we are comb so this is the data set that we want, and it's from the package data set. And um, we can update this using the update select input. And then lastly, we have the summary of the data set is being shown. Okay, so let's look at that. So if we choose, so we have got two data sets, the pressure and CAS. So if we choose CAS, it will show us we can choose either to see the summary of the speed column or the, dis the distance column. We can, if we choose the uh, pressure data set, we see that one part is being frozen and then we see the other part. So if we look at the pressure, we see the column pressure, uh, it's summary, the summary statistics of that particular column. I, I have a question. Why would we want to do this? I understand that we want to hide um, some parts of the UI, but what, what would be its advantage? Anyone has an idea? Ryan or Federica, I saw you presented in cohort one. Uh, <laughs> Like what will what 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 will be the importance of freezing some parts of the UI and and freezing the other parts? I understand it helps to have like the dynamic uh, UI where yeah. you can different. Yeah, ba parts. basically, you if I'm not uh, um, basically you like freezing uh, everything uh, until you uh, require. So when you uh, uh, send the input, then at that point uh, uh, it will um, do the thing that you have requested. Otherwise, it doesn't doesn't do it. Okay. Yeah, I I understand the theory. I'm just trying to see how it can be practically applied in like in a real world. App, if it makes sense. I think, as I say, I think we're relating to optimizing. We're wanting to optimize the network call. Ready? Sorry, I'm trying to do this from the phone. Um, 
Ik nog weer iets. Is dit mijn internet? Oh, oké. Okay. Here you are. Okay, uh, so moving on to the next uh, bit. So here we see that for us to freeze, we use the freeze reactive value where it freezes a part, part of the input for us to be able to see um, the other parts of the app. So the last- Yeah, if I, if I don't remember wrongly, sorry if I interrupt you. Uh, the, the thing is that the user might uh, most probably when uh, when it's presented with a new app starting clicking things and how it works so these things will prevent some uh, uh, issues within the app because of um, uh, a certain number of clicks uh, um, so this way only one so it does something one at the time um, that makes sense yeah I, um, I'm, I haven't revisited the chapter so apologies about that so this um, I remember that, that the, uh, as well that this um, uh, it's very important for uh, preventing errors, so um, that the app would uh, like uh, freeze uh, and uh, not, um, not not working properly for not working properly. So th this will let the user clicking around but uh, prevent the the app to to go overflow then basically like okay that makes sense thank you okay so the last uh, so the last section here is we consider circularity as seen in many apps it is created when uh, re when requested for making simultaneously changes recursively so what it means is that when updating the inputs, automatically another input is created in the function of the first one. So under this condition, the cycle can create a recursive loop on the current value of the inputs, bringing it to run again and again in circularity. So if we look at this particular code, we see that we have this UI, this is just simple. And um, we have, we want it to update each and every time we have a value of n, n plus one. So we, when you input n, and then when you do n plus one, um, yeah, it's like, a, it's like a circle, I think. So anytime you add another value, so the whatever value that is seen on the UI is updated each and every time you, you input another value aside from like say zero in this particular case. Okay, um, so we had we have seen about how the action button um, can reset the input. So this is this is the simplest example of using this command. And this is the reset button like we have seen earlier. So it's one of the clearest examples of what is meant with making a dynamic change. So when the user interactively intervenes on the app, making a choice, and then the reset button makes it easy to reset the parameters back to their initial value. So here we have some ID inputs, and then, uh, so this is part of the UI. Then we have the action button. And then in the server, we have the observe events. Then we have the update ID inputs. So if, for example, it was numeric inputs, um, sorry about that. Um, when we have numeric inputs, we'll have update numeric inputs in the server. 
And this is the sim a simple use of the reset, reset input button is shown in this example. So here we have the spring temperatures, which generally vary on average between 19 degrees Celsius and Sorry, between 19 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius. So when we set an average value of 21 as the reset point, so let's see that live up. So we have, it is, we said on average, it's between 19 and 25. If we put 20, 20, it is automatically reset um, to change to 68. And if we put two, it automatically changes to 36. So, so in short, that two degrees Celsius will be 36 Fahrenheit. Yeah. Okay, uh, so with that, we have looked at how we can use the updating inputs functions. So let's see how we can hide and show parts of the UI dynamic, dynamically and interactively. So the two, medias, the two main ideas here is we'll use a tab set panel with hidden tabs. And so this is in the UI part, and then we'll use the user, the function update tab set panel, which will switch tabs from the server. So the tab set panel, here again, it's the second function that we'll use, and it does involve the visibility of part of the app. So this function is made to let user show or hide some parts of the tabs in the main panel. It is a technique that allows managing the appearance of the app with selecting visibility of the tabs as shown in tab set section in this. So it will be worth to have a look at. It's a very nice guide. So here we have the tab set panel, and this is the UI, which sends a message to update the tab set panel. So you can choose which particular tab uh, panel you wish to um, interact with as a user. So to enhance your app with, with, a feature, with features, the most wanted themes, as an example, on how to set visibility of your shiny app, you can follow the steps that are found in this particular link. So I found it to be quite interesting to see how you can. So I, I would want to look at the summary. So it has hide the plot, and I can want to I want to look at the table when we have the different distributions. So this is an example that was created in the book, and we'll go through that example in a few. So the example we see is that we have um, the sidebar layout. So I'm assuming this is we are in liquid land. It's we're giving some features of the UI. Then we have the sidebar panel, and you can you you select a controller, and then it's named show. And then you can choose either to look at the plots or the summary. And um, so for the main panel, we see the following. You see that we'll see the plots and we'll also see the uh, summary as a tab, tab, tab panel body, sorry, fun, using the tab panel body function. So if we look at the server, is that we'll have the updates. So it, it is always combined with observe events. Then we have the updates tab set panel where you can switch in between the controller that you choose. And so the example that we've seen, it's below here. And this is called conditional UI, which allows us to simulate different parameters to be set in the app. So using the tab set panel function is updated with input requests as a separate section with the different types of input ID, and then we embed it in a full fuller ID. And this is the example. So here we want to have got 
three uh, distributions that we want to look at plots or the summary statistic. So if it is a normal distribution, we know that it's okay. Um, the two parameters in a normal distribution is that it's mean and standard deviation. So you, you, you input mean and you input uh, standard deviation. And so for the uniform distribution, it has got two values, so a minimum and a maximum. So you input a minimum value and a maximum value. And lastly, the exponential distribution, its parameter is a rate. So which is meant, which, which uh, ranges between one, sorry, between, yeah, which ranges, well, it doesn't range anywhere. You can, yeah, <laughs> you can put any value. So with this, again, we do in this, the entire code that we have called it as a tab, the parameter underscore tabs, we then add it inside the fuller ID, which allows the user to pick the number of samples and show the histogram of the results. So here we have the UI, we have a side by layouts, as we see, we choose the kind of distribution we want. So for example, if you choose a uniform distribution, this actually shows us, then if we change the values, also the, the data, a new detail generated, and we see also the summary statistic is also generated, and also the plots also changes. Yeah, kind of looks like a uniform distribution. And if you want to see a normal distribution for the same, you see that this is this changes, and it hides. So using the tab set panel function, we hide the panels and let the user choose what kind of panel they would want to see. Um, so there's a note here that the choices in the input dollar list, that was the placeholder we chose. Oh, sorry, yeah, it will be shown below. Yes, input dollar list, list, sorry, matched to the names of the tab panels. So it makes easier to write with to write the observe event function, which automatically uh, switches controls with when the distribution changes. So here we have a server with the list, and then if we update, we, we have update tab, tab set panel, which go hand in hand. Uh, since we, we are looking at the tab panel function in the UI, we have a sample data that will, that will be generated. And here we can choose between the kind of distribution you wish. So we, if you choose normal, uniform, or exponential, and whatever the, that we're seeing, we're seeing a histogram of the particular distribution we've chosen. So if we look at this, this app that was cr created by the author, if I look at the norm, if we choose the normal distribution, we see that we can see a, um, we can see the sum, the histogram of that particular sample. You can go be, the number of samples can increase or can reduce. And here you can say you have you want a standard distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. You can also choose um, uniform distribution and you see how the histogram is changing based on the distribution you choose. Um, excuse me, and here there's um, the freezing uh, function as well. The freeze, I no, I don't think so. No, 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 no. He, I, I think it's based on using this switch function. You can okay, see switch in between the different distributions. Because somehow the panel is freezes until you make the 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 next uh, input. Yeah, I think so. Anyone can jump in with a different comment. So we have other options that you can be able to use to switch among the different pages. An example of this is uh, creating a wizard and using the switch underscore page function, which allows, uh, which reduces, sorry, the amount of duplication in the server code. 
We will discuss this further when we look at chapter 18 of functions. However, we can look at an example of the shiny app that was created by Mr. Hadley. Um, so welcome when we click next, we go only one page to go, then you can click next, and then it shows us that you're done. We can go back to the previous. So this is uh, the, the previous page that we had and the very first page we saw. I, I don't have much to comment on this. Uh, yeah, I, I think it will makes it will make much sense when we discuss chapter 18, where you switch the pages. And lastly, is if we want to create and modify a user interface while the app is running. So we can do this using the UI output function, which is in the UI part and the render UI, which is in the server part. So these two functions are for applying the technique of rendering the UI by setting the value of the new input to the current value of the existing control. This technique does give the developer ability to create and modify the user interface while the app is running. So the UI outputs, the output function which act in the UI part, like I've said, and the render UI will act in the server part. In this context, the, we learn about a new function called isolate, which will be able to do this isolating a particular input. So again, for more information, we'll discuss chapter 15, section 4.1. So be excited to learn more about that. Yeah, uh, so this is an example of what happens. So we have, we, we're, selecting the, we're selecting a select input type, which is the placeholder ID that is called. And we we'll select either a slider or an input, numeric, sorry. And then so it will auto, using the UI outputs will allow, sorry, I did not understand this function well. So we have, so here we want, if I, if I got it correctly, is we will be updating the app. The app will be updating itself automatically using the UI out outputs. And um, the render UI does that for us. Okay, let's see the app. Okay, so we have, if it's a slider, so if I put, let me see what happens. Oh, so if we put 12, we see that 12 is being up. It's 12 is named in this, but the very last box. And if I choose a slider, it changes between either a numeric or a slider. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, Lucy, it's just, uh, the same concept of it as before. So you, if you, hello? Yes, 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 sorry, sorry, yes. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Can you hear me or I? Brendan, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, yes, hear, you. I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. So it is on Fedez. 
Does anyone have uh, a comment regarding um, this particular last section? Okay, my comment is about uh, the slider inputs. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were moving the slider, I discovered the numeric inputs, uh, it was not updating. Yes. if you put the slider, but I think it's because you've chosen particularly the slider, right? But if we do numeric, and then you can, or uh, what exactly do you mean? No, just go back to the slider, let's. Okay, slider. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, there is no issue. I've seen it. There is no problem. Uh, hi, Lucy. I've just dropped the meeting. I don't know. My connection's gone. No worries. Welcome. Uh, okay, so I was saying something about this uh, uh, isolate function. It does as the same as before. Mm -hmm. So you, you isolate the input in a way that you can do one input at the time mm -hmm. uh, and there's few ways uh, in the few following chapter they specify another function which is rec and we yeah. talked about that uh, in another meeting so the 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 the, the, the concept is um, is the same ah okay so it's it's like you can do uh, things uh, in, in, in many different ways. Okay. So you if you're isolating, so for example, in this case, if we if I got it correctly, if we isolate uh, the slider and choose numeric, all you can see is the numeric bits. But if we choose particularly the slider, all you can see is slider okay okay thank you for that so in addition to the uh aforementioned functions we have got more features that are available as a composition of each other and many many more uh, so to allow the user for multiple controls dynamic filtering and dialog boxes so for this particular section, we were, we are we are discussing about the functional programming, and I tried to understand this section. Um, I I really didn't because I have no idea about functional programming. Yeah, so maybe Chris, who is I think well versed with this particular section, or even Ryan um can give us an idea of what they understood upon reading this particular section or even brenda sorry anyone is open to discuss it's a silent house <laughs> okay um Please, if you do read and understand, uh, give me a shout out. I will, I will be really willing to have a discussion with uh, the two last sections. And um, so to conclude is we have seen the dynamic um, of the UI that can be appreciated by the modification of the use of the server and many compositions of the basic functions would let the user be able to interactively change the outputs to have the desired visualization. I, uh, I had a quick look of the cohort one with uh, Federica presenting. And if you, there were more details that were the discussion based on cohort one, um, have a look and you can, we can always discuss on the Slack channel 
please again if you are if you understand functional programming i understand it's in advanced r programming but i'm a bit scared of starting to read that book yet <laughs> yeah uh, okay any comments any discussion any question all right so I, I'd say I have at least made sense. If I've not, I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> it was one challenging topic. It took me some time to understand it. I still haven't understood some parts, but I'm sure if I reread, I will do that. So if I look at our signing up sheet, uh, Brendan will be leading the next topic. Are you still available for that? Yes, I should be. Awesome. So we can uh, meet next week for the chapter 11. Uh, chapter 11 is on bookmarking, yeah. I think, right? Bookmarking. Awesome. Yeah. And this, uh -huh. we still don't have a one for peg evaluation and the other chapters, but we are getting there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, I if no other comment, yeah, I know Ryan would have contributed much if he was able to <laughs> speak to us. But I'm sure I, we can I will reach out to you, Ryan, regarding the last two bits. Be assured about that. Um but I wish you the, a good afternoon, good morning, and a good evening, and let's keep in touch. All right. Thank you. That's, that's good. Thanks, Lucy. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you next time.